So again, I welcome you all to the HPC in the City St. Louis Hackathon Discord and GitHub training. Now, this training session that we're having today um, is actually the first training session where we have both the mentors, the organizing committee, and participants and staffers all together on one Zoom session. Uh, we make sure that we do these different training sessions to include the information that uh, would be beneficial and, and to make sure that your teams are successful during our upcoming hackathon, which will be starting on November 4th and then running through November 8th. For some of you all, this is your first time. Uh, so you're gonna get to understand uh, some of the deliverables and things like that. But before, so, uh, just to let you know what we're going to talk about today, we're going to have some quick introductions of the organizing committee. Uh, you're going to get to learn me, that guy that you keep getting emails from, uh, uh, as well as I'll be presenting today, uh, the hackathon objective, our deliverables and resources so that you're aware of what's expected, and some general information, and then we're going to dive right into the training itself uh, to ensure that you are aware of these tools. Now, I want to take a mo moment and uh, introduce our organizers. So right now, I believe we have two other members of our organizing committee with us, uh, Miss Amy Cannon from Omnibon. Uh, Amy, would you mind saying hello? Hello, everybody. Great to be here today with all of you. And Dr. Linda Hayden. Oh, she's waving, but we couldn't hear you. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> hey. All right, and we also have, <laughs> and we also have uh, my my brother from across the sea, Alex uh, Nolt. Uh, he's not here. He's actually over in beautiful Estonia and or Greece, depending upon the time of the year. Uh, Mr. Boyd Wilson uh, from Omnibon, who has supported us from the beginning, as well as Amy Cannon, who I've said is always the heart of our group. And Dr. Hayden has been the driving force that actually had this this grand idea that now is in its fourth year uh, that uh, we have been working together. And then myself, my name is uh, Jimmy Powell. I'm from TAC, uh, or Jamie is just fine. And let's go ahead and move forward, please. Come on slides, there we go. So now the objective of HPC in the city of St. Louis is to basically take the resources, skills, knowledge, that are all found in the HPC, so the high performance computing, commuting, computing community, and bring them together in a time bounded, concentrated format uh, to exchange ideas and work on problems that, in this case, are directly uh, targeted towards issues affecting uh, St. Louis and the greater. Uh, metro area as well as uh, Missouri as a whole as a, as a state. Um, during this time, you as participants, you'll actually uh, have increased familiarity with data science in the cloud. So in other words, you'll be actually using skills as opposed to just learning about them. Um, your experience collaborative software engineering, which is its own interesting bit of learning. <laughs> you'll, there is a bit of a learning curve uh, when you're programming collaboratively. Um, and then you'll develop some professional communication skills because you'll be presenting your results at the end of the hackathon itself. Now, having said that, there's some things that we want are going to want from you all as teams uh, that you're going to be presenting on uh, November 8th, that, that night. Uh, you're going to have a GitHub repository, which we're going to learn about today. Uh, within that GitHub repository, you're going to have source code, including your comments, a PDF of your presentation that includes your team members with pictures of your team members. Um, you're going to explain how your team used HPC technology in the project. And you're also going to say what the regional impact to St. Louis, the implications of that project may be. As well as in that GitHub repository, there's going to be a readme.md. You're going to see that today that you want to make sure that you add a project description to. Some of the resources that you're going to have available, uh, you're going to have uh, computing Google Cloud uh, credits that are going to be provided by Google. You're going to have access to Cloudy Cluster as well as the personnel and skills uh, from those uh, that actually 
program and support Cloudy Cluster from Omnibon. Um, some of the more commonly used uh, uh, resources uh, in people's projects include Python, Jupyter Notebooks, Node.js, Revlet, and uh, HTML. All of these, you've made, hopefully you've either heard of, or if not, you will be intimately familiar with by the time you're uh, done with the hackathon. Um, and again, Discord, the reason we keep jumping on Discord is because that is our method uh, by which we communicate during the event. If you haven't joined the Discord, join the Discord. The three T's, I always like to break it down a little bit for the three T's. Each team will be comprised of four to five students, one primary mentor, and then one specialist or staff member. These teams, some of y'all are going teams, teams. How do we join teams? The teams actually will not be formed until November 4th. Now there's some students that may have talked together. They may be from the same university and they, they've decided that they wanna to work together. But generally speaking for the vast majority of you all, your team will not exist until November 4th. Uh, after that, we're gonna have daily check-ins. So on that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday morning, we're gonna have what are called check-ins. And during these check-ins, basically your, your team gives a one slide, one minute update of where they are. And during those check-ins, quite often I make sure there's some surprises and some little mini contests that go along with it. And I know what you're thinking, contest, yay, woo-hoo. But um, just a hint to you, for those of you that have never been a part of one of Hack HPC's hackathons, we give cash prizes. But wait a second, Jamie, we're virtual. How do you do that? If you recall during your, uh, during your registration, we asked you for your PayPal because we send those funds directly to you. So just putting that out there. And then of course, on the eighth, we have our final presentations. Some topic examples include, of course, COVID-19, economic disparities, social justice, genomics, uh, molecular dynamics, weather modeling, social justice, AI-based crowd status. Uh, Ms. Jocelyn actually uh, uh, handled that and she would like to be given a end-to-end -end project training session the Thursday before the event. Uh, so I highly suggest you watch that. Uh, public data management, graduation rates, broadband access, which of course is a big deal, insurance and public health resilience, and the list goes on. Now, some of the mentors are actually gonna come on that uh, Thursday night, our kickoff night, and they're gonna give some one minute presentations of suggested projects in order for you to choose their project to work on. But once that project, once you're in that team, your team may adjust it as needed. So it's gonna be pretty interesting. It's gonna be pretty interesting. Now, communications platforms, Discord and GitHub. Now you've heard me say that a couple of times and for goodness sake, it's the name of the, the training session. The reason for that is because we use these tools so much, we want to make sure that everyone has a basic understanding of these tools because they are so vital. We understand that everybody's skill level here is varied. We have people, we have students that have either very, very little programming skills, or they may just be starting out up to PhD level skills who are considered the, the specialists in their field. And we're putting you all together in a group. There's some basics, there's some foundational level information we wanna make sure that everyone has. With Discord, of course, we're speaking about communications, textual and voice, we'll talk about that in a second. And then with GitHub, we're talking about our visual and archival information for our programming, uh, information in our in our slides and things. So that's why we include GitHub as one of our communication platforms. Think of it as marketing. Discord itself. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna switch over to Discord here briefly uh, after the next slide, but just to put it out there, some of the basic functions of Discord. Now, many of you likely have used Discord or something like it, such as Slack, but its primary functionality uh, allows teams and members to message each other. What that means is we are spread out all over this country and in our last hackathon around the world, Discord allows us all to interact and yet 
in a central location, allowing us to share files, do screen share, meeting rooms, and even just hang out in a room. If you're up at three o'clock in the morning, which hopefully you will not be, <laughs> you're up three o'clock in the morning working, just hanging out in a room, somebody's playing music, and y'all can just talk and work as you will. And of course, file exchange, which always can be interesting. Discord, the Discord server, the Hack HPC Discord server has a few channels that we've already set up. Uh, one of the primary ones is HPC in the city of St. Louis. During the event, that's where I will post any announcements, anything that's going on, training sessions, any special events slash contests that may pop up, hint, hint, wink, wink. <laughs> Um, we have our assistance channel, which is a voice channel. So you can come in and just ask your questions if you like, or tell somebody, meet me in the assistance channel. You know, we can, we can help each other out. The Hack HQ General. Um, and of course, you're going to be making, or I should say your mentor will be making a custom team channel for your team. So that a private channel just for your team. Some of the tips, just to let you know, um, I'm going to show you how to browse for a channel, which in, uh, in the case of Discord is very easy. Over on the left-hand side, you're going to see it. Um, you're going to be able to see how to create a group if you'd like. Um, and then I do want to talk about the conference features, because if you're coming from Slack, it's a little bit different, although Slack has recently added the Discord way of doing it, uh, but we're, we're going to show that. Um, there is one thing I do want to tell you about that is uh, you may want to uh, try for yourself. In the case of Mac users, it's Command K. In the case of PC users, it's Control K. Uh, that allows you to search. So let's take a look at that real quick. So let me drop out of here. Now let's switch over my share to Discord. Let's scroll that up a little bit. Share. Excellent, there we go. So here is a very brief view of Discord. And actually I'm gonna move it over and I'm likely gonna to have to reshare it here so you can see it in its full glory. Let me open this up a little bit. For my fellow taxters, we use Slack as our communication device. And up until uh, this year, actually, we use Slack for the hackathon. We decided to switch over to Discord because we actually found that more students utilize Discord as well as the fact that Discord is free and open so that we could maintain our community over the course of the year as opposed to ending it between events. So we want that's why we switched over to Discord if anyone was, was wondering. So right now I'm in the general channel. This is the channel that everyone lands in when they first start. And you see we have a couple of people that have joined. If we wanted to message general channel, I could go down to the bottom here, type in hello, and boo bam, I'm talking in general channel. So those of you that have Discord now, you just heard a little beep beep, and there I am. Over on the right-hand side, you have a listing of all the members that are within the general channel. And so here we see that Ecker actually said hello back. Now, let's say I wanted to have a little private conversation with Ecker. I can actually click on him and go, I see you. And I'm actually messaging him directly. It kicks us over to a private session. Not too bad. So within here, I could drop files. So I'm sure that Edgar needs a copy of the calendar invite for the training session. And boo bam, he actually has that file. It's pretty cool. Now, one other thing you wanna notice that Edgar, even though I know Edgar, he has his own personal profile. That is perfectly fine. We know that uh, many people, as you see on, on mine, I'm connected to other discords as well, discord servers as well. And using your personal account is perfectly fine. Of course, as long as the person knows who you are. Now, there's one other thing I do wanna show here. So I'm gonna go back. Right now I'm in direct messages. I'm gonna leave direct messages. I'm gonna click back on Hack HPC, puts me back in general. And I'm gonna head on over to Hack HQ general area. And you notice I have a couple more controls here. Now, Edgar was kind enough to meet me here. And inside his general chat area, now I could turn on my camera, which I'm not going to because I am actually gonna, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it. Why not? 
no, I better not risk it. I don't wanna, wanna throw Zoom off. But I can video chat with, with Ecker. I can share my screen with them. And also I can just flat out talk if we wanted to so that we can share this space. So also just to put out there, if I wanted to add a new channel, I can add a text only channel by hitting the plus button there or a voice channel by hitting create channel there. So for your group, I will of course suggest you make a voice channel so that your group can join and multiple people can talk and share files and all that good stuff. One other trick I do wanna throw out there, let's say you're looking for a specific person. I just hit my command K button. And let's say I'm looking for Edgar. As I typed Edgar's name in, even though his username is different, I do see this is Edgar. I can select them. And now I'm again back in the private messages. So for those that are used to using Discord, this is old hat. For those of you that have never seen uh, Discord before, now you have an idea of just how this works. Now I'm going to actually put myself back in the general channel. There we go. And I'm going to stop the share. So that is a basic overview of Discord. So let me go ahead and share out my slide deck again. There we go. Let's go ahead and get this going. Let's move forward. Now, GitHub. For my programming specialists out there, that GitHub is where they spend their life. You're not going to learn anything today. I'm sorry. <laughs> but for my students that you've heard of GitHub, you're just new to programming, or even you're intermediate to programming, or you've never used GitHub before, this is going to be very helpful. But this is, I want to warn you, this is just the surface level of GitHub that I'm going to go into. What do I mean by that? GitHub has two major ways in which you interact with it. Well, I can say three if I include the desktop client. The way I'm going to show today is the web-based way. So we're going to go to GitHub, the website, and we're going to work from there. The second major way that people generally interact with GitHub is they, uh, they actually do it from command line. So from the terminal or from when the, within a program like VS Code or Atom, if you're using that as your, your editor, those have connections to GitHub that can also do these similar things. I also want to throw out there, there is a difference between GitHub and Git. Although they link together, GitHub is mainly talking about the website version of it. Git, just plain Git, is generally talking about the command line version. And that command line version can either be a local repository, repository being a place where your code is going into. Generally speaking, locally, it's usually a folder and you have files in it. Having said that, I don't want you to get confused when people say Git or GitHub. They can connect together, but I do want you to be aware there are local versions, but those local versions of Git can connect to GitHub. I know it's a little bit interesting. So that's why instead of me going into all of that, not to mention there's things like merging code and conflicts and things that, that there are people who their sole job is to take care of such things like that. I'm going to show you a straightforward way using the web in order to, to use GitHub. I'm also going to mention GitHub pages, which is a really powerful feature that will make your project look a bit snazzy, just letting you know. So with that said, let's demo. Now, the demo I'm going to use uh, today is actually uh, located here at github.com uh, at my GitHub Git intro is one that I use many times, but I do want to put out there demos, live demos are often interesting, very interesting, but we're going to do our best. Hopefully everything goes well and the, uh, those, those behind the demo curtain will allow us to, to uh, do what we need to do. So here we go. So first, I am at GitHub. Now, right now I'm logged into my personal account, which brings up a good point. As 
a a uh, a part of this uh, uh, hackathon, what I've often seen is there's one person on your team uh, that sets up the GitHub and they take care of it. Well, that means that that repo is theirs, and that's perfectly okay. But what I suggest is that you follow or fork, well, I'm gonna say uh, watch or follow or be added to a repo project in order that uh, it, it, so that all of you all will be listed there. One person can do it. And I always suggest you have a person that's in charge of deliverables to make sure you have everything uh, uh, together for your presentation. However, comma, um, I also wanna make sure that uh, you get proper credit uh, and that you're, you're linked because GitHub, especially as a programmer, um, is often looked at as a uh, part of your portfolio. So when companies are looking uh, at you uh, for a particular position, you have code snippets and things like that on your GitHub. Personal note, um, so I'm also a lecturer at the University of Texas and I teach introduction to scientific programming as well as computational uh, computational programming in um, uh, the department of engineering. Those little programs that you work on for, cl for class, especially that final project that all of us know, and I'm sorry, it's halfway through the semester, so I'm sure it's in the back of your head, this knowledge that you have this project to, don't just let them go. Create yourself a GitHub profile and copy your code to that profile. Highly suggest you make a readme file for it, which you're going to see me uh, work with today, uh, so that it explains what's within that project as well. That's a part of your portfolio. It's worthwhile taking those extra 10 minutes so that in the future, when you're uh, working at a job or, or put in for another position, you can refer to that, those code sets and refer your future employers uh, to those code sets as well. All right, I'll get off my, I'm, I'm stepping back. I'm stand, standing down, Edgar, I'm standing down. <laughs> um, so this is a repository that I created. Now to take you through that process, what I did was when I logged in as myself, I went to the little plus sign and I went to a new repository. I typed in a name for it, a brief description. I set it to public and I clicked add a readme file. And that was it. I, and then I clicked create repository. I know it's so difficult. No, this is this is the again, this is a straightforward, easy way to do that. In doing that, what would have shown up here is just this little README file. It has the name of the repository and then whatever the description is. So you keep hearing me talk about this README.md. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you see that this is GitHub repo and design, but if I click on raw, oops, let me back up a little bit. If I click on edit, you'll see that it, the Git intro actually has a little hash sign in front of it and then test repo. That .md extension, so readme.md, md stands for markdown, markdown. Now what markdown does, it's a method by which you can basically programmatically write a document, but style it as you go. And there's lots of information out there on this. So for instance, if I were to go under a test repo for Hackathon, I can add a, let's say a bullet point, which happens to be a star, or let's put a title here first. I'm gonna put two little, two hashes, space, and I'm gonna say things, covered here, hit enter. Now I'm gonna put one star in a space because I want a bullet and I'm gonna say uh, awesome thing one. And uh, then I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna add another bullet point because you should never just bullet point once, but we wanna do an awesome thing two. And let's put one more thing out there for awesome thing three. And we're gonna say on the awesome thing two, I'm going to tab in and say, uh, this is important also. And I'm going to make this italicized. Ooh. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom. 
this is the power of GitHub. I'm going to say what I did. Added my awesome things. Down here at the bottom, the reason you have to add this, you add commit changes and then it asks for notes, is because it documents the changes you have. It it's, gives you what's called a change history. When you're working on a program and you fix things, that change history can often save you. Or someone accidentally deletes something, which is actually kind of difficult inside of GitHub, but it can be done. That change history can save you because it tells you why something was done. So it's extremely important to use this feature. I'm going to click commit changes. And now you can see that now my readme has things covered here. Awesome thing one, awesome thing two. This is important, it's italicized and awesome thing three. It is, here's a word for you, it's rendered out. So my markdown code was rendered out into this. Not bad, eh? Kind of neat. So having said that, let's go another step further. So I'm gonna go back to the main repo. So I'm going back to git intro instead of readme. And I'm going to add a file here. So on my desktop, I have a folder that has everything that your project should have. It has a presentation in it with pictures. It has code, code in it. And it also has a picture that goes along with it. So I'm going to click add file. And I'm going to go to upload files. Upload files. And I'm just going to click and drag my excellent team project in here. You see it uploads. There are limitations to file size, just putting that out there. And of course it'll let you know. And you see, I have my team presentation. I have a picture in here. I have a readme.md, I have a main.pi, so some Python code and my data set. And down at the bottom for my commit changes, because we want to say what we did, added my team project info. And in the, the description, I could add exactly what I added, put in the presentation, uh, presentation, uh, team pick, uh, code, and data set, add it. And I'm going to go ahead and hit commit. Take a moment. And now I have my excellent team project. I can click on it. I have my PDF, so if I click on it, it actually gives me a little preview of the slides, which happen to be the slides for today. My data set's there. I have a picture here. I'm pretty happy with this. And the readme.md that's within this folder, it actually renders everything out. So my excellent team project, team members, me, myself, and I, purpose, and the picture and how to use my code. Pretty neat, pretty neat. And so if I go to the readme.md, the one that's rendered out in here, and I'm gonna to go to edit file, you can see I'm just using that markdown code to add the pictures and the code. And even more important, I added a little link here so that you all can see what that code is. Now, just for giggles, I am going to drop that code in where, where's he going to drop it? He's going to drop it in the general channel of Discord. So uh, GitHub Markdown. I know this is one big gray, uh, gray box for you, but I'm dropping that link inside of GitHub just for you. And just so you can, uh, if you want to take a look at this, uh, repo. So let me go back here. I'm going to drop that link in there as well. Join Discord. <laughs> now, there's one other thing I, or I want to show you about this. Actually, two things. Uh, the first is you can actually take a look at the commit history. So this is that, that history of things that happen. So if you want it to change something, or revert, you can. The other important thing is it says who did it. So let's say that there's five of you on your team. 
that are adding things, if something broke or is missing or whatever may happen, you can see who did it and you can see that change history. But there's a last thing I wanna show you and it's called Get Pages. I could turn this into something really cool. Instead of looking just like a regular page, a regular GitHub page, I can go to settings and over on the left, there's a section that is called pages, which I am looking past. There we go, pages. And when I click on that, this actually allows me to turn this into a page. Now I wanna show you an example, a better example than the one I have here of a GitHub page. So we're changing gears here so you can get an idea of what this is really like. One of the links that I keep sending you is the uh, Hack HPC event page, Hack HPC event page. So the way we get there, I go to hackhpc.org and even go to Hack HPC, um, Hack HPC in the city. Up on the top right, we have a button here called HPC in the city Hack Hub. If I click on it, it's a web page that has our pre-event sessions. Now, this page is actually our main event site for this hackathon. So the rest of our uh, uh, schedule is going to be here as we have scheduled, as we have speakers and things like that. We're going to have links to their videos. Each of the event training sessions, we have our slides and uh, review video if you'd like to take a look at it. So this is our main place to come. So in other words, if during the event, you're like, what in the world is going on? Where am I supposed to be? I need to get my life. You can come to this event site and you can actually find out what's going on. But this was made on GitHub. So right now it's a web page where I, my name, jimmyhp.github.io slash hackhpc slash HPC in city 21. If I click on view on GitHub, you can see this is just a repository. Just like that last one. Inside the repository, I have an index.md, index.markdown. So instead of index.html, I have an index.md. And inside of there, this is the site. I go to edit. It's just markdown text. It's so much easier to make. But then it's presented as a web page. If I go to environments, view deployment, it's presented as a web page. And all of these uh, CSS styles are controlled by a theme. It's just a theme. So let me put that in perspective. I'm gonna drop back. If I go to Hack HPC past events, and I am really hoping. I remember which team it was that I want to show. So I'm going to go to past hacks. And under past hacks for HPC in the city, I am going to go to, I believe it was the Rosada's Tigers. Rosada's Tigers. Let's see here. Yes, that's the one. So this is a team from last year that they worked on breast cancer prediction. As you can see, they have their code listed here. They have their readme file set up. They have some information here of a preview. Not too bad, not too shabby. By itself, this is great for your portfolio. But then if I click on their GitHub pages and I go to view deployment, it's an actual website that I can go through. So just putting that out there for you. All right, I have, I have talked enough about that. I'm gonna drop back to my presentation. We have successfully completed our demo time. Whoo, <laughs> and now I can actually say that we are done with that training session. So uh, I am gonna ask, uh, open the floor to questions, but before I do, I do wanna say that we will have uh, a course Training sessions leading up to the event on November 4th. Our next training session next week, which if you have friends that you have asked to join you, this is a training session. The next 
three training sessions are the ones you want them to come to. So the next training session will actually cover Google Compute Cloud, how to use it, how to set it up, how to use the different features and Cloudy Cluster. And that's actually gonna be presented by Mr. Boyd Wilson of Omnivine. I highly recommend, highly recommend if there are some friends that you met that you were like, you need to go to the training session, go to that one, please. It, it contains some essential information that will get your team started on the right foot. After that, we'll have our data to dashboard training, which will actually be presented by Ms. Lissa Pearson. The, during the projects, there are a lot of teams that end up using something called Flask, which allows you to make a basically a web page slash application um, using Python, which is wonderful. The problem is that many teams run into the issue of where are they going to put it? Lisa Pearson's gonna come in and uh, show an example of some code that uh, is an application. And then she'll show you how to bundle the application and then uh, actually serve it from a service called Heroku. Heroku, highly recommend you do that. And following that are uh, Jocelyn, one of our own, who has been in your position as a participant and has now been a, with on this hackathon, hackathon will be her third time participating as a student mentor, will actually show us how she's taken an idea and gone from an idea for a team on through to a final product. So it gives you an idea of the entire timeline of how it works and some of the, some of the issues that her teams have faced and how they've overcome them. Beyond that, our schedule is, of course, there. Now you know all about the <laughs> why that link is so long, gmhp.github.io, hackhpc, dash hpc in the city 21. The schedule will be there. It's going to be updated as, uh, as we go along. So beyond that, what I'm going to do is I am going to end the recording and then open the floor up to questions. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now.